of the great features and benefits of variable speed systems can only be realized if the system is set up properly from the day it's installed. For this, we need the OEM installation manuals. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. These manuals are going to tell us how to select the heating, the cooling, the comfort, the constant fan, all the abilities of variable speed systems. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth on how these setups are done on different systems. This also makes this a great segment to watch for service because many of these systems do not get set up from day one. As a service technician, when you work on a variable speed system, it's a very good idea to get these manuals and check to make sure that all of these settings are correct. First, let's look at the different types of controls that manufacturers use to get these settings. There are jumper pins, which is basically a fixed jumper in a piece of plastic that can be moved from pin to pin, labeled typically A, B, C, D. And usually there's a bank of two, three, or four of them. There could even be more. Then there's something called a dip switch, which also comes in a bank and could be a bank of two, three, eight, or even more. These typically have an off and on position or a zero and one position. That'll be specified in the manufacturer's charts. Some manufacturers have used and still use today a dial type control where I would turn the dial to get the number of airflow or tonnage of cooling that I want or even model plugs where the model plug will have a jumper between two specific terminals to select a type of heating or cooling airflow that I need for that system. Let's take a look at where those controls show up in the HVAC system. Different manufacturers do it different ways. This example shows a thermostat that would send the W heat or Y cooling demand down to the OEM control board. That control board would then send the W or Y command down to the tap board where the uh, jumper pins or dip switches would be located. Once you select the airflow and comfort settings on those jumper pins or dip switches, the specific communication would be sent down to the motor to tell it what airflow or comfort op options you want. In this application, we see that the manufacturer has combined those two circuit boards into one board, which is kind of nice because it reduces uh, harnesses in the system and it reduces parts in the system. So all of the settings, including settings for on and off delays that don't have to do with the motor or thermostat setups, are all located on one board. And the latest and greatest technology that we have in residential and like commercial HVAC is communicating technology. With this technology, many of the setups are no longer done on the board with these switches or settings. It's actually done up at the thermostat, which is sometimes called the user interface. This device works uh, a lot like a handheld Palm Pilot or Blackberry, and where you would do all of your setups through menus, and those setups would be digitally communicated down to the board in the furnace or air handler. So on a demand for heat or cool, the user interface would tell the board what airflow it needs. The board would tell the motor to produce that airflow. So now let's get into some examples of what those charts look like in an OEM manual. Here's an example of a cooling or heat pump airflow table where we see we can select either the CFM or, and we can select the trim adjust. So with these combination of controls, I can select, for example, the uh, C jumper or the dip switch one and two, one being off and two being on, I can select 1200 CFM on the cooling chart. If I want to modify that cooling airflow for a uh, humid climate, I want to derate it a little bit, I can go over to the trim adjust and I can set that airflow to a negative 10% and that'll give me some more dehumidification. Now, what you're setting in your cooling chart is the second stage airflow. If you have a single stage system, that's all you would set. But if you have a two stage system, oh wait, that's still all you would set because first stage airflow is almost always a multiplier off of what you set for second stage. So that makes it a little bit easier. Even on two stage systems, you're only gonna be picking one cooling airflow and one heating airflow. Here we see that a manufacturer has combined the cooling and the trim adjust charts together to where I have an elongated chart with the trim and the just together uh, selecting many different airflows. So if I want to increase or decrease the airflow above 
what I want per ton, which again, typically 400 CFM per ton. So if I wanted 1200 CFM and I wanted to go a little bit higher, I'd go with the AA setting, which would give me 1250, or the BA setting, which would give me 1300. We can tailor the system any way we want to. Here's one more example of those charts for cooling or heat pump, where I can actually select the tonnage and not the airflow. If I've got a three ton uh, air conditioner, I would simply set it for a three ton. And then if I want to uh, decrease the airflow, I would simply select the 350 CFM per ton. So many different ways to select the cooling and the heat pump airflow, but a lot of versatility. And I hope you'll agree, actually fairly simple, as long as you have the manual. Now on to the heating settings. Uh, whether we've got a gas propane or oil furnace or even electric strip, we see that these charts are again very simple. Looking at my heating airflow settings, I could choose either my BTUs of my system for my selection or I could choose my temperature rise where the manufacturer tells me what the temperature rise range they want and give me a range of options to hit that temperature rise. And the beauty of this is I get to pick a heating airflow that gives my customer exactly what they want. If they want more efficiency, I can go with a lower temperature rise. If they want a warmer register air temperature, I can go with a higher temperature rise. I can really set up the system to meet the needs of each individual customer. We see also that on the oil setup, I can set it up by uh, gallons per hour by the firing rate of the nozzle. And we see on our electric strips chart, I can simply set it up by the kilowatt of the electric strips. All very easy. Now one of the very unique options only available on variable speed technology is comfort profiles. Comfort profiles allow us to program a range of operation into the motor that it will perform each time it gets a demand for either heating or cooling. For example, if I call for cooling in a humid climate, I can program the motor to ramp up slowly over time up to 100% airflow. That ramping up is going to decrease noise and it's going to increase dehumidification at the evaporator coil by providing less than maximum airflow. Now, by eventually getting up to 100% airflow, I still will run the system at maximum capacity at some time during the thermostat demand call unless I actually satisfy the thermostat demand while I'm dehumidifying. Either way, I will pull more humidity, more moisture out of that home during each thermostat demand call than any other system. So again, comfort profiles give you the ability to set the system up, not only per the climate that you're in, but also according to what the customer wants in their home. You may live in a dry climate and have a customer that still wants that home as dry as possible and set it in a humid mode, or you may live in a humid climate and have a customer that wants it in dry mode doesn't matter because you can set the system up to do whatever the customer wants. And again, that setup would be done using the uh, jumper pins or dip switches to select either the A, B, C, D or the uh, zeros and ones on the dip switches. Now, the final dehumidification option I think is actually the coolest because if you can imagine in those profiles, every time I run a call for cooling, I'm going to run that profile, meaning I'm going to get dehumidification every time my air conditioner is on, whether I need it or not. This last option allows the system to have a humidistat added to it. The humidistat mounted in the living space will monitor the humidity. And when the humidity is too high, send a signal down to the appliance telling it to go into dehumidification mode. This will then tell the variable speed motor to slow down a little bit and run at that slower airflow while the humidistat is calling. This gives us on-demand dehumidification in the home. Certain times of the year in certain climates, I may be running dehumidification all the time. In other climates, I may only run dehumidification when I need it. The beauty of this type of setup is it only gives you the dehumidification function when the home needs it. And last, constant fan. Last but certainly not least. Constant fan gives you the ability on variable speed motors to run a very quiet, very efficient motor operation, taking full advantage of all of your indoor air quality products and giving you the destratification value in your, uh, even your single story homes, but also in your two story homes. Constant fan is usually a fixed multiplier of the cooling airflow setup. Okay, what does that mean? 
Well, once you select the cooling airflow, say you select three tons for cooling, the circuit board is automatically going to determine the constant airflow off of that setting. So if you select two ton of airflow, the constant fan is going to be a little lower. If you select four ton, it's going to be a little higher. So the system automatically tailors the constant fan to that system. Some manufacturers also offer you the opportunity to change that constant fan, to run it really slow or a little faster or even at full heating or cooling capacity because some homes may want more airflow or more ventilation. Hopefully you'll agree that setting up variable speed systems is not quite as difficult as the first time you tried it, the first time you were at a class and this was uh, covered, and or the first time you tried reading one of those manuals by yourself because trust me, I've been there. Variable speed systems can provide your customer with unmatched comfort, unmatched efficiency, and many options to tailor it to the needs of individual climates and individual customers. If it's not set up from day one using the manufacturer's manuals, not only will these comfort options not work as properly as they should, but the system could also suffer from failure, from noise issues, and from decreased efficiency. These manuals should also be left on the job site so that future technicians can use them for servicing the product.